Hey, uh, welcome to Tufting 101, my four-part video series where I'm going to try and teach you everything you need to know to get started tufting. Today, we're talking about the materials. It's like your fabric, your yarn, your glue. And in other episodes of Tufting 101, I cover the equipment, the techniques to actually use some of this stuff, and also all the money, so the costs and business opportunities if you're looking to sell your rugs. So be sure to check out the full playlist, but today we're just talking about the materials. Let's get started. All right, the first kind of material we're gonna cover is going to be your fabric. There are two types of fabric you're gonna use while tufting, your primary fabric and your secondary fabric. Your primary fabric is going to be what's stretched across your frame and what you actually tuft into, where the secondary fabric, also commonly called the backing fabric, that's just a fabric we glue to the back of the rug once you're done to kind of seal it off, give it a little layer of protection. When choosing a primary fabric, you want something that'll have voids, little gaps in between the fibers of the fabric. This is because you need space for the tufting needle to shoot through the fabric and retract out without ripping or making any holes. Common primary fabrics are monk's cloth, burlap, some types of linen, and a few others in different countries have different names for these things. The industry standard does seem to be monk's cloth. They actually make industry-specific tufting monk's cloth with little guidelines on it. However, I don't use this stuff. I've found it to be super expensive and only a little bit better than some of the alternatives. This monk's cloth is often sold for $30, $40 a yard. As with a fabric like burlap, which is what I use for all my rugs, that only costs about $3 to $4 per rug, so 10 times less. Now, it is important to note the monk's cloth is a superior fabric. However, I have not found monk's cloth to be worth what you're paying for. Burlap gets the job done. I do pretty much all my rugs with it and I've never had an issue with durability or functionality of any kind. The only drawbacks to burlap is that it's easier to create a hole while you're tufting. This used to happen to me when I first started using burlap and it seems to commonly happen to people that just switch over to burlap. But with proper technique, that can be completely avoided I don't get any holes anymore just because I've fine-tuned the technique. I'll talk a lot more about it in the Technique Tufting 101 video, but just some quick notes. Make sure your primary fabric is nice and taut. Also, it's important to use a good amount of pressure against the fabric. You just gotta be firm with it. You don't have to put too much weight into it. Just some people are too light with it and that'll create holes. It's also important you keep the gun perpendicular with the fabric and always have it pointing in the direction that you're traveling. And finally, make sure that your yarn is feeding right. So many problems are caused by people's yarn not feeding nicely. More information on all that in the Technique Tufting 101 video. Just know that if you're on a tight budget and can't afford to be spending 30, 40, 50 dollars on one rug, burlap is the answer. Go with burlap. To buy your primary fabric, if you're going to go with the monk's cloth, I do recommend going online. However, if you're going with burlap, pretty much every fabric store sells it. I get mine at Joanne Fabrics for three or four dollars per yard. Your secondary fabric or the backing is just a fabric that you're going to glue onto the back of the rug to kind of seal it off, laminate it. Also, if it's a thicker fabric, you can feel it. It does add a bit of softness to the rug. I've found that pretty much any kind of fabric will work for it. Some are better than others, but if you have a bunch of, you know, random cotton fabric lying around your house, go ahead and use that. It'll work great. Some cheaper options for the backing fabric is like a cotton canvas or a thinner felt. Little more expensive versions are some like thicker felt and they also make like non-slip felt. It has like a little rubber backing to it. You can also create this yourself though just by buying like non-slick mats and putting them on the bottom of the felt. It's usually cheaper that way if you do it yourself. The method I've found to work best is a little life hack. I actually go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy these big painters drop cloth. It's this thick cotton canvas drop cloth used by painters so if they make a mess it doesn't get on the floor. I find it's actually a terrific backing and usually for $20 you can get this massive sheet of cotton canvas. So again if you're on a tight budget go with that. Go get a painters drop cloth, cut it up, use it. 
works great. It's also important to note that you don't always need to use a backing. For example, if you're gonna be mounting it on wood to hang it on a wall, you don't need any sort of fabric backing. You can just do it straight to the wood. The wood kind of acts as that backing. It largely just depends what you're gonna be doing with your tufting item. If it's going to be a rug on a floor, I pretty much always am gonna recommend a backing. But if it's not going on the floor, it really just depends on the circumstances. Just know it's not necessary, but it does help with durability. All right, all right, next up, we're gonna talk about yarn. You can't really see it, but I am actually sitting in a sea of yarn, so I am ready for this section. The three main types of yarn that I've encountered are acrylic yarn, wool yarn, and cotton yarn. Out of these three, um, the cotton and wool, they might have some more like specific applications if you want a certain feel or a certain type of rug. They're also natural where acrylic is synthetic, but I do recommend going with acrylic. It's much cheaper and there isn't really any drawbacks to using it. I use seven ounce acrylic yarn. I believe that's five or six millimeter yarn. Your tufting gun can handle a pretty wide range of yarn. Really, if it fits in the needle, it should work. With the type of yarn I use, the seven ounce, five millimeter, I think, yarn, I highly recommend using two strands at once. Again, I'll talk more about this in the techniques episode of Tufting 101, but really using two strands of yarn helps so much. It makes the process go faster, it gives you more even surface, and it helps prevent the yarn from being unthreaded from the gun. Just all around, two strands of yarn, and for that reason, I do recommend you always buy two of the same color. Boom. Another thing to note about the yarn is you'll see I use these yarn bundles, the skeins I believe they're called. I have not started using cones of yarn, largely just because I've found them to be pretty expensive. And also I love how my local craft store just has a bunch of yarn and I can go look at the colors, feel it. I just love to do it that way. And if you start your skein by pulling it out from the middle instead of wrapping it around the outside, it'll just feed out no problem. You don't have to transfer it to a cone. You can just go straight from the bundle, which is awesome. Again, more info in the Technique Tufting 101 video. A question I get asked a lot is how much yarn do I use per rug? I find this to be like a really hard number to estimate just because you're using different colors and it's hard to estimate how much of the yarn bundle you use. You can't really tell how much yarn actually goes through the gun. So it's a hard number to estimate. But my best estimate for these like two foot rugs that I commonly have been making is probably like 750 to 1000 yards in one rug. Definitely just buy a lot of yarn. I definitely was like blown away by how much yarn the tufting gun burns through when you use it. So so just buy a lot of yarn. I 750 to 1000. Let's call it that. Next up we're talking glue. It's useful to have a few different types of glue for a few different purposes throughout the tufting process. The most important one will be once you're done tufting into your primary fabric, you coat the whole thing with an adhesive to help lock it in. For this, I highly recommend using just like a general purpose flooring adhesive. Just go to your local store, again, like Lowe's or Home Depot, Menards, anywhere that they sell carpet or tile products. I got this massive like bucket of it for $20 or something. I've made a bunch of rugs with it and I'm not even halfway through it yet. So the glue is not that big of an expense. Some people like to use a PVA glue for their backing like Elmer's glue. This I don't really recommend. It's just a lot more expensive. And also when it dries, it's pretty firm. It's not too flexible. Whereas this flooring adhesive really does. I mean, it's made for this sort of thing. It stays flexible, it's soft, it's strong. And after it's fully dry, I think they say after 30 days, you can wash it. So it's just like carpet, you know, you can scrub your carpet and the adhesive is fine. It also can be useful to get some sort of spray adhesive. This is a super efficient way to put the backing onto the rug. However, I personally have stopped using spray adhesive just because that stuff is like super toxic. I hate it. I, every time I would use it, I would get like a headache. I'd get dizzy. I never had like a full respirator on. That would definitely help with the problem. But even with good ventilation, just like one whiff of this stuff was like Ugh, toxic. So personally, I don't like spray adhesive. However, it is pretty efficient. It works quick, it works good. I wouldn't count it out. 
but I don't recommend, honestly. However, on the flip side, a glue I do definitely recommend having around is hot glue. There's a few times where using a hot glue gun will be super useful when making a rug. I don't really think it's ever necessary. You don't need a hot glue gun, but if you have one, you should have it ready because it can be super useful. Doing a binding, it's super helpful to just hot glue it down, or if part of your backing ever comes up, you can just hot glue it right on down. For certain applications and certain quick fixes, hot glue is dope. Another material to note is that you do really want to keep your gun clean and lubricated. For this reason, I'm going to recommend having both like WD-40 and a lubricant. Definitely important to note that WD-40 is not a lubricant, it's a solvent. So it's very useful for cleaning your gun, getting gunk and yarn out of the mechanism that moves, but it itself does not actually lubricate. So I recommend having a lubricant around a very common one is going to be sewing machine oil. That works great here. Again, I'll talk more about cleaning your gun in the Technique Tufting 101, but it is important to both clean the gun and lubricate it. Otherwise, it'll seize up and have a shorter life. Gotta take care of your power tools, everybody. All right, cool. I think that about covers it for everything for materials. Be sure to go check out the other Tufting 101 videos. I will talk about the equipment, which is everything like the Tufting gun and the frame. I'll also talk about the technique and give you some tips on how to operate your gun and avoid problems. And I'm also gonna make one on the money and expenses with Tufting. And if you're looking to sell your rugs, I'll talk about the business opportunities and doing so as well. Links to all of those will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. I really hope you learned something. Please subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed my content. I'm not asking for no money or just, I don't have any sponsorships or partnerships or anything. I just want to help you guys. I just want to see a more creative world. I just want to see more rugs. So please show some support and subscribe to the channel. And if you do have further questions on the materials used in tufting that I did not cover in this video, please DM me on Instagram. I love to help out, start a conversation, and let's talk tufting. Thank you so much, for real. I appreciate you so much just for watching my video and supporting my work. Dude, was my microphone off that whole time? Oh my god. Oh my god.